Our next delegation is uh, Chris Politsky with Revy Riders. Chris, if you might go up to the uh, podium. Thank you, Your Worship, Council, and guests for allowing me to present. My name is Chris Politsky, President and Co-Founder of Revy Riders Dirt Bike Club. I've got 10 minutes, so I want to get going. This is, uh, this is our progress debate. I've got 10 years of work in about 10 minutes. So here's the sign at the entrance to our track. We were established, this is the old track in the industrial park. We were formed in 2007 when our old track was decommissioned. Turned out to be a blessing in disguise because our new area is way bigger and better. We searched the entire valley for two years, everywhere from Three Valley down to the ferry, up north, everywhere looking for the location we finally settled on. This was a few years ago and we've done a bunch more work since that, but that's it up on West Side Road. We broke ground in 2010, it's hard to see, we just kind of scratched, there was a big rocky field there, we scratched the surface, and then we brought in the heavy machinery, we had a bunch of equipment donated. We had to cap the entire area with rocks, you can see in the corners all the rocks, the whole, a big majority of the area had a lot of rocks, and that's not really conducive to a track, but we, we found the dirt, and dirt, some dirt was donated, and we capped it, and we had, we figured, and with fairly accurate estimates, $600,000 in-kind contributions, and mainly from Downey Street sawmills, timber, Sherhall, and anybody else that would lend us a piece of equipment, and then Sherhall, Clint Lindsay would bring it up to the track, and we would have our operators do all the work. So quite a bit of, of our own contributions went into that, like our own work, and with the donated equipment. There's no, no funding went into the track there. So in 2014, things really began to take shape. You can see it's nice and dirty, like the, it's nice dirt, it's very, the rocks, that's the same picture of that corner that, was, that I showed you two slides before. And there it's looking much better. And now the track is used by families. There's a dad and his son. We have kids of all ages riding the track. We've got tons of women starting to ride. And the professionals are starting to take notice. They're stopping in here more and more often. Um, we basically have three tracks. We have an enduro cross, which is an obstacle type thing. It's got like rocks and logs and tires dug into the ground. That's just one uphill, and you've got to climb that log at the top. You've got this uh, pile of logs that you ride over, and then you go into this thing, an obstacle called the Matrix. There's some riders taking it, and this is what the Matrix looks like from the rider's view. Then you can kind of see the rocks that we have to deal with. So you go through that. It's a challenging, the one on the right is more challenging. The left, we have an easier line around the whole course so everybody can ride it. But it is fairly. It's meant to be tougher to challenge some of the riders. And here's another obstacle. You come down this hill, you hit, there's a log dug into the ground. You hit that log and you fly over those tires, or some with less skill would ride over the log and ride over the tires. So last the drill cross track. Here's our kids and beginner track. It's kind of, it's off separate. You can, it's right beside the parking area. You can kind of see a couple little kids and bikes and a couple corners, a couple jumps, super safe. Kids love it, it's busy all the time. It's produced some great riders. And that is the future of our sport right there, the kids and beginners. You need the kids to grow it. There's our main motocross track showing that work. You can see before, it was just a field with a bunch of trees. We cut down the trees. This is kind of what we've done. And this is a little more artsy shot. My wife and kids said, put that one in. It's hard to tell in here with the light, but. So we've done a lot of work there. And onto the trails. This is what we've dedicated. This is where a lot of the funding has gone into. We have some of the best trails around. Look at, like that is pretty much as good as it gets. It's like nice forest there. Nice dirt, it's a machine built trail. The guy's wheeling, it's got good flow, it's a great trail. And this is how it starts. Like we have about 80 plus kilometers of trails and every one started like this. I'd walk, every, every one of those trails I've walked with flagging tape and you find the line. You want not too wet, you want it sustainable, so you have to find that drier areas, not too rocky, not too much stuff you have to cook, to cut. And this is some of the extreme stuff we've had to walk through, like big piles of bear poop, like three feet in diameter, right by this shot. And <laughs> so it's always an adventure, lots of scraping, going through the bushes, but I, rain or shine in between trips, I'd be out there planning out every trail. So once we lay out the trail, we GPS it, we send it into the rec officer, she approves it, or Ken Gibson approved it, then we begin brushing the right of way. Sometimes we use the forest spiders, sometimes we have to pay professionals, sometimes we do it, but yeah, we clear all the brush in that so we can get down. So we, in pre preparation for the machines, they can go through. They want to be able to see. They don't want branches sticking in the way. And we call in little big works with their machines and a couple of guys. The one in the front is kind of the finishing one. They call it the, the ditch rich. And that one in the back is basically a mini excavator. And that does the 95% of the work. It pulls the rocks and logs and stuff that didn't get cut out. That thing moves away. So here's what a trail would look like with the first pass with the machine, OK? And then there's, here's one with the ditch, which is starting to get a little bit better there. 
and then a finished trail looks something like that. We clear all the brush off to the sides, you know, so it's safe, good sight lines. You can see, like, because you can't control the direction of trails, so we just put signs up, and so you want to be able to see ahead in the distance. So here's this is one of our newest trails that we built last year, and here's another picture of it. You know, it's steep, it's uh, big old growth trees, it's beautiful. There's views. It's like very highly sought after. Okay, here's another one of our trails using some of the natural features like rock. That rock sustainable. That's not going to that'll last there for over a hundred years. So that's a trail called Squirrel City. Here's one of the best riders in Canada. Another rock feature. You know, there's a nice look up there. I'll show you later. And here's one of our premier, our signature trail, Roland's Revenge. That's way up above Red Side Road. And the problem with this trail now we're finding is because so many people, we put a sign up saying, hey, this is an expert trail. If you're not an expert, don't ride it. But everybody wants to try it because it's so good. It's like Jurassic Park back there. It's like 15 kilometers long. Out in the back, there's big rocks, canyons, and trees, and it's, it's pretty impressive. But we're finding the maintenance. Like we built it really well, and it's holding up great, but so many people are trying to ride it in the rain and all that. So it requires a lot of work to get because there's no roads there. You have to carry everything in or to do the maintenance. So it's proven to be an issue, but we're handling it. You know, we've been an extremely busy club and some of our other projects. Here's a boardwalk that we did. This is a wet or sensitive area. This is the first trail we built, smooth operator. And, you know, to, to not go in that, we built a boardwalk and that thing is held up 100%. I think one board has been broken, that had to be replaced, but it's, it still looks just like that today. Um, we've been tracking some big name sponsors. Climb is one of the biggest names in off-road snowmobile. Um, off-road dirt biking apparel and Red Bull, well, that speaks for itself. And they, they're super impressed with what we've done and they want to work with us in the future. That new trail we built is actually called the Climb, spelled like that, just in honor to, just to work with them down in the future, more in the future. Last year we built this 70 foot creek over Dead Man's, bridge over Dead Man's Creek, you know, and that's, we had to, that's BC Hydro land, so we have a partnership with BC Hydro. They like what we're doing. They're more than happy to work with us, so we put that in last year. There's what it looks like from the rider's view, so you can't go off the edge. It's nice and safe. It got certified from an engineer. We had 27,000 pounds of concrete on that uh, to test it to, to simulate the snow load in a possible fine colors. Um, here's our parking area, but it's getting bigger every day, our parking. So here's our kiosk. It has all the maps and information. In the back is our sponsor signs. Further back, you can see an outhouse. And there's some of the pros that are coming through town. They've got their big motor home, their big semi hauler. They come in, they, every year they come through, they go for massages, they spend a couple nights in Rolls Royce on their way from like Kamloops to Calgary to the big national races. Um, two years ago, we did this project with Columbia Basin Trust. It's our CCAN. We cut a door in it, we keep all our first aid stuff, all our tools, our equipment for grooming the track, and then we have the steps going up and a platform on top, all wood, so you can look down and get a good view for spectators for viewing the track. Um, every year we do an annual mud splash cleanup. We have literally hauled tons of garbage out of there, you know. Dirt bikes, you know, I've lived here for 49 years now and we rode up there when I was seven years old and so to keep, so we don't get kicked out, we want to do our part in clean, keeping that area clean. So we've been, this is very important to us. Um, we have an annual trials event. This is the national, it's just getting bigger and bigger. We'll be doing this again coming up this year. The ladies triple B event is huge. It doubled last year. This isn't even all the riders. This is just a random picture I took. I was sweeping at one viewpoint. And then our Papa John Classic last year had over 200 riders and their families. So we basically had 200 village idiot cooked dinner for 250 people. We had a Glacier House Resort. It was a huge success. It was professionally run. The people were amazed. Everyone was just dying to come back for that. So that, that was on the Saturday, this is Sunday, we had our first race, and this is just a, a portion, this is one class in the race, and it was just a huge success. It was up, this is our new track extension that we're working on. Um, so future plans, we want, to, we want to build a five kilometer, we, we're trying from Columbia Basin Trust for build a five kilometer total beginner trail, expanding the parking lot, expanding the beginners, we're installing the watering system, make the track a little bit longer, and what we want to do is have more motocross races. You can have, we got easily two a year, and every event we get over 200 people, 200 families per event. And our track just needs to be a little bit bigger, and we need a little more parking, so we're working on that as we speak. Other notables, we have 130 annual members. Parking lots continue to fill out of town. I, I just, on the way up, there's a guy from Alberta, his bike's in the back, I took a picture, it's on my phone. We're gonna install the trail counter to keep an accurate number, because we don't really know, but there's tons of guys. There's thousands of guys every year coming to ride it. Um, when we started, we had a five-year tenure with Front Counter, and now they've renewed it to 30 years with us. We have a 
great partnership with Rec Sites and Trails BC. And we are honestly widely recognized as the premier riding destination in all of Canada. They, they know we have the best trails in Canada. So I want to thank the City of Rumblestoke, Rec Sites and Trails BC, Resort and Municipality Initiative Program, CSRD, Columbia Basin Trust, Rumblestoke Accommodation Association, Downey Street, Timber, Sawmill, and Sawmill, and sure, all transfer. We couldn't have done any of it without the help of these people. So thank you to all of you guys for this. And here's just a shot. Three guys from out of town on one of our views on one of our Squirrel City Trail overlooking the dam in the valley. And there's like well, 10 different places you get views like that. So that's my 10 minutes. <laughs> <I'll> presentation. <laughs> How do you take a 30 minute presentation to make it 10 minutes? <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, I'm going to say you guys have done an awesome job out there and in a short period of time to go from, from nothing to, to what you guys have created is just like uh, unbelievable. And, and uh, you know, hats off to you guys. You've done it. And I think that with the Resort Municipality Initiative and, and putting in money, that's exactly the kind of projects that they're looking for that, that are bringing people here. It's uh, becoming better and better well known and, and uh, no, great. Thank Comments you. from Council, uh, Council Brothers. Chris, I love your enthusiasm, your obvious commitment to this. And I mean, it's just amazing to see. But how, how, how is it sustainable financially? I mean, how, how does it work? Well, we're, 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 we've just been allowed, like, our, our club membership is $100, so we have, like, you know, thirteen thousand dollars right there from club memberships. Plus, now we've installed. We're legally allowed with rec sites and trails. We have. I mean, we just put up the signs this weekend. Big signs like it's a pay system to use the trails. So everybody that comes to the park lot, there's three big in-your-face signs saying you have to pay. You know, and then we have a lockbox, and then we're getting a system where you'll have a receipt and you'll put it on your dash, so we all know. And then it'll be it's ten dollars per visit. So that is really helping out the, the day-to-day -day maintenance. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chris, your enthusiasm is wonderful, and your personality works for volunteers that want to work with you. You've put so many years into this, and, and thank you for that. And I know the Lindsay family that lives across the street from yeah. me, like they're all riding, oh, yeah. Jan's riding now, and like, you know, using their equipment. Just really, really great partnership, Shana. Thank you, thank you. When we started, there was maybe 10 families at the very most riding their bikes in town, way back in the day of our old track, and then now it's you know, you see them in the back of trucks everywhere now. It's, it's growing. It's definitely, definitely taken off. Councilor Duke. I have my fat council wage. I've been not on a bike for two years, so I just bought the bike, so I'm super excited. <coughs> These pictures just really amp me up because of the work you guys have done. I know from not riding for pretty much two years and going back to the trails, you practically double them, so yeah. I'm excited. But there ain't things, Chris, because yeah. whatever you do, it's uh, good to hear the leader of my ship. So Thank you. Any other comments? No, great. Thanks for the, okay. the update. And okay. uh, we'll see you here next year for another 10 minutes. Do I get flowers? <laughs> <laughs>